Part A states Fibonacci pose, uh, posed the following problem. Suppose that rabbits live forever and that every month each pair produces a new pair which becomes productive at uh, age two months old. So every month there's a new pair and it becomes productive after age two months. They live forever and so on. And if we start with one newborn pair, how many pairs of rabbits will we have in the nth month? And then, then basically it states, show that the answer is Fn, where Fn uh, is the Fibonacci sequence defined in example 3c, as I illustrated earlier in this video. And then part B states, uh, let An equals to Fn plus 1 divided by Fn, and show that An minus 1 equals to 1 plus uh, 1 divided by An minus 2, and so on. And assuming that An is convergent, find its limit. All right, so now let's look at part A. So... Uh, we'll go over this rabbits ones first, but first let's recall the Fibonacci sequence defined in example 3c, and it was right here. Fibonacci sequence Fn is defined recursively by the conditions F1 equals 1, F2 equals 1, and then we have Fn equals to F, Fn minus 1 plus Fn minus 2, for n is a positive integer greater than or equal to 3. So in essence, we're just each term is a sum of the two preceding terms. So F3 is going to be F1 plus F2. And the first few terms terms are 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 5, uh, 8, 13, 21. And, and again, you can just add these up. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 13 is going to be 21 and so on. And 1 plus 1 is 2. So let's uh, look at this. So uh, let A and B the number of rabbit pairs in the nth month. Okay. So we're asked here again. So suppose that rabbits live forever and that every problem, every month each pair produces a new pair which produ becomes productive productive at age two months. So if we start off with one newborn pair, so if we start off with how many pairs are we left in the nth month? So let uh, a and b the number of pairs in the a in the nth month. So clearly, we know the first uh, few months. Clearly, a one, this just equals to well one. There's one pair. And then also age, I mean, at the month two, so because the rabbits live forever and they, but they become uh, productive at age two months. So in, a, so in the second month, the first one is going to be, well, it's a newborn pair. So then it's going to, this is going to equal to A2. So after two months, there's still going to be one rabbit, I mean, one rabbit pair. So the first one, and then it becomes productive. And then after that, they're going to start producing. Yeah, so now in the nth month, uh, each pair that is two or more months old, that is a n minus two pairs, yeah, is basically all of the rabbits that were around for the uh, two months ago. Yeah, so two months ago, all the rabbits that existed then will will produce new pair. Uh, and to add to the a minus, I mean a n minus one pairs. So we're gonna add to the two months previous, all the rabbits that existed, all the pairs, add it to all the pairs of uh, last months, okay, or the number of those, and we'll, we'll uh, explain this as I illustrate this. So in other words, all the rabbits that are present from two plus months ago multiply, so we add the total number of rabbits from that time period to the, to to the total number of rabbits from one month ago, since this number has no, um, yeah, I mean, uh, it has newborn rabbits that haven't matured yet. Those are the ones in one month ago, so you can't just take that number because some of them aren't going to reproduce. So thus, let's just write this down to get this pattern. So thus, we have... Well, we have a1 equals to 1, and then a2 equals to 1, because they, because we still have, oh yeah, we still have one pair. And then now a3, the total number here, and these are the uh, the third month. So the first month is 1, second month is 2. But then the third month, what we end up having is, well, we take uh, the ones in the first month. So the number in the first month, which was, well, a1 plus a2 now, because... We're actually yeah, better than better than I'll write a two plus a one, just so it's easier to write. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the number of uh, rabbits rabbit pairs in the second month, which was one, and then we're going to reproduce. They're going to reproduce. We have another one. This is one plus one, and that's because uh, they started off at a one. So this is going to be well two, and now notice how now you'll see understand this pattern. So a four. So a four is going to be well. We take we initially have two ra rabbit pairs. So two rabbit pairs, A3. So we take uh, all the ones from here. Now we're, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, multiply all the ones from two months previous. So this is what this one just had one. So we just add A2. Equals two, two plus one equals to three. And then A5, what we'll do here 
is we take all the number of pairs from the previous, so A4, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add all the ones from the previous, A3, because these are the ones that are going to multiply. So there's two pairs here that are going to be matured by the time it's A5, and these two are going to produce two more, so that's going to be, yeah, so there's plus this A3. So we're going to have A3 plus 2 equals to 5. And I'll just write uh, one more of these, just to illustrate this. So now A6 is going to be, we take the previous pair, the total number of them, A5, and then plus, then we plus the ones before, there was three, and these ones are all going to multiply. So these three are going to be six. I mean, they're, I mean we're going to add these three. The three, three are going to produce three more here. So we'll have A4, and that equals to five plus three. And this equals to eight like that. And then we keep going on and on, then what we get is a n equals 2, well, a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2, because you can see these. a3 is a2 plus a1, a4 is a3 plus a2, and so on. And this as well, this is just the Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> this equals to Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence from sequence yeah, Fibonacci sequence from example 3C earlier in the video. So yes, so thus the sequence AN equals to the sequence FN from before. So this is the uh, Fibonacci sequence. So yeah. All right, so now let's look at part B right here. So part B says let AN equals to FN plus 1 divided by FN and show that a n a n minus one equals to one plus one over a n minus two and then we're asked assuming that a n is convergent find its limit very very interesting let's, let's see what we can come up with right here so part b I'll write this down part b all right so we're gonna let uh, over here let uh, a n equals f n plus one divided by f n so let a n equals 2 f n plus 1 over f n again where this is uh, the Fibonacci sequence f n so and then Russell asks us to show is write it down show that show that a n minus 1 is equal to 1 plus 1 over a n minus 2 and let me just uh, scroll to see if we got the right one there so yes uh, a n minus 1 equals uh, 1 plus 1 over a n minus 2 so let's go ahead for yes first of all let's look at this a n minus one let's put an arrow across there so we have a n minus one this is equal to well this is going to be minus one here so the top is going to be instead of f n plus one so f n plus one minus one f n and the bottom is going to be f n minus one so we just replace n with n minus one like that and now f n recall f n is just equal to well that's just the fibonacci sequence and scroll up Fibonacci sequence again is just fn equals fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 for n is greater than or equal to 3. So we have fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 over fn minus 1. Yeah, so that's just the Fibonacci sequence on top. So now this equals 2, well, divide this out. This is going to be fn minus 1 divided by fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2 divided by fn minus 1. So this cancel becomes 1. So what we get is equals to 1 plus fn minus 2 over fn minus 1. And what I'll do here now is I'm going to multiply uh, the top and bottom by, well, this uh, power right here, 1 over fn minus 2. Because remember, we want to show it, it, it it's like that. So then we're going to try to get rid of this, make it a 1. So get rid of the denominator by dividing by it on both sides, top and bottom fn minus 2. So then what we end up having is 1 plus, then this one cancels, we get a 1. So 1 plus 1 over, and we have this fn minus 1 divided by fn minus 2. And now this fn minus 1 uh, divided by fn minus 2, well we know that fn plus 1 divided by fn is equal to an. So, and we'll, yeah, then we subtract one more, we get fn over fn minus 1, but this is fn minus 1 over fn minus 2. So in other words, this just becomes F, uh, fn minus, I mean, just, just, this just becomes an minus 2. So add another one, so fn minus 1, fn minus 2. 
So this becomes a n minus one, I mean minus two, a n minus two. So thus, yeah, so thus, a n minus one equals to one plus one over, so one plus one over uh, well, a n minus two. So there it is, we've proven this so far, yeah. And that's exactly what we've proven over there, as I've written above uh, here. Yeah, so we just proved that. Now we're assuming that a n is convergent, find its limit. So let's find the limit now. All right, so now if we want to get the limit of this one, so we, we know that the limit exists, so we are given that the limit, yeah, the, the limit exists, in other words, it's convergent. So what we'll do is write, so if, if a, a limit, so limit, as n approaches infinity of a n is equal to l, yeah, then, then by the earlier theorem, then basically uh, this limit, then uh, limit as n approaches infinity of a n minus one, this also is going to equal l, and this also equals to limit as n approaches infinity of a n minus two. And this is a, from the theorem that I uh, just went over, where it was, uh, was a theorem, uh, theorem two, I believe. Scroll above, uh, actually no, theorem three. Actually no, and, and neither theorem one or two. Uh, I mean, and from exercise one, remember this one here, the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus one equals the limit as n approaches infinity of a n. And again, you could just see this one here, instead of having a plus one, we could have had a minus one, but in the exactly the same thing, we're just gonna have m would be uh, n plus one, uh, and so on. So it's exactly the same thing, no matter what it is, it, they're still approaching infinity or approaching the limit. So the limit is being approached regardless where your initial starting point is. Yeah, so from exercise one, I'll uh, just put a bracket. Uh, from exercise, ex, or just for, yeah, from exercise one, and also just using a, a bit of a deduction. Yeah, so that's what we have is well, we take this a n from above. So thus, a uh, limit as a n minus one, I mean a uh, limit as n approaches uh, zero. <laughs> My bad. n approaches uh, infinity, not zero, as a uh, limit as n approaches infinity of a n minus one. This equals to L, which equals to over there, this entire limit, limit as n approaches infinity of one plus one over a n minus uh, two. So in other words, uh, what we end up having is this is becomes limit of this one using limit laws, and then we just get the we get the equation L equals to one plus one over L, and now multiply uh, both sides by L, and what we end up having is multiply by L on both sides so that uh, nothing changes. We end up getting is L squared equals to um, yeah L. And this, uh, this one cancels now plus one. So just move this onto the, uh, actually move the other ones to the other side, like that. What we end up having is, um, I'll put the zero on the other side, or I should put it this way, zero equals to L squared minus L minus one. Or just put it the other side for uh, convenience. So we have it like that, so L is gonna be on the other side. I mean, uh, zero is gonna be on the other side. L squared, and move everything here, minus that, we have this. So, yeah, and so now what we could do is well recall the quadratic formula again, just copy and paste from the one I've written above. So what we have is L is going to equal two over here, uh, where now B, I mean, yeah, B is negative one, so we're gonna have a negative of a negative one, plus or minus square root of a negative one squared, minus four, and then A, which is one, then times it by C, which is negative one like that, all divide this by two times a, which is one. And then this equals two, well, negative one times negative one is plus one. Then we have plus or minus square root, now we have negative one squared is one, uh, minus four times one times negative one, this becomes positive. And that becomes, well, plus four. Like that, plus uh, four over two, and again, this just becomes five, save time. And there is our answer. This equals to the limit. Actually, no, it doesn't equal the limit because we have the plus or minus. Yeah, so it's a plus or minus, so thus uh, L has to be positive, so we take this one here. Thus, L equals to 1 plus square root 5 over 2. 
input in a bracket, I will just put here since L must be positive. Like that, a number, it's a number of, yeah, it's a number of, uh, of uh, rabbit pairs. <laughs> that was positive. You can have a negative rabbit pair. And again, yeah, scroll up here. So yeah, this uh, basically part B was just giving us a, a, a easy way to find the limit by showing that it's, uh, you could write it in this form and use the exercise one um, theorem that I covered. So now, yeah, the a actual uh, numerical answer to this limit is actually very interesting and very important in mathematics. Uh, L equals to, if we put this in our uh, my built-in uh, one-note calculator, uh, one plus square root five, uh, all, all brackets, close brackets, divided by two equals 1.618033988749895. Uh, 